I'm Andrew Rail of Amherst, and this is Dead on Arrival. In these videos, I discuss bad or unsuccessful locomotives and establish my thoughts on them, as well as why I leave them off extinct or favorites lists and never build them. The purpose of these videos are to inform and educate, and not to insult viewers. Union Pacific is my favorite railroad, currently one of two major American railroads to have been in business since the 19th century and being the oldest major railroad in North America. It is also famous for having the largest locomotives to ever exist, such as the 9000 series 412-2s, 4884 Big Boys, General Electric GTELs, and the EMD DDA40X. From the 1910s up until 1986, Union Pacific was well known for always wanting massive locomotives that were able to handle heavy trains unassisted and at speed, instead of using multiple smaller locomotives to pull one train, and later up to three diesel locomotives instead of five, six, or seven units per train. This reduced operating costs on crews, locomotives needed, and wear and tear on the locomotives. This was especially the case following the retirement of the last big boys and challengers in the early 1960s, followed by that of the last GTEL in 1969. Beginning in 1963, Union Pacific contacted the top three locomotive manufacturers in America to build them a three-unit lash-up of locomotives that could produce at least 15,000 horsepower, so at least 5,000 in each unit. And so began a time known as the horsepower race. Those manufacturers were EMD, General Electric, and the American Locomotive Company, or ALCO the latter of which was now being overshadowed by its competitors and only six years away from going out of business just like its Steam Age rivals before it. EMD's offer was the successful DD35 models, Alco's would be the unsuccessful C855, and General Electric's was the U50, the largest model in its then-new Universal series of diesel locomotives, manufactured from 1963 to 1965 for both the Union Pacific and Southern Pacific. The U50 had a B-plus-B-B-plus-B wheel arrangement, using recycled trucks from scrapped Gen 2 GTELs with span bolsters, and like the DD35 models, turned out to be a successful and satisfactory locomotive for Union Pacific, though not as much as the DD35s of it. It was also two U25B locomotives on a single frame, and sported a very spartan wide cab with a very short nose. From 1969 to 1971, General Electric developed and built a second version of the U-50 known as the U-50C, which just like its predecessor, used trucks from scrapped GTELs, except this time, they used two three-axle trucks from the third generation turbines. This gave them a C-C wheel arrangement, which was the first main difference between the U-50C and the regular U-50. Like the U-50, the U denoted that the U-50C was part of the Universal series, and 50 meant 5,000 horsepower. The C denoted the C-C wheel arrangement in the U-50C. The U-50C had the prime movers directed inward to create a centralized radiator section. They also used two General Electric FDL 12-cylinder engines instead of using two 16-cylinder engines which was part of a weight-saving measure that made it 4.5 feet shorter than the U-50 at 79 feet, compared to 83.5 feet of the U-50. The reason General Electric chose to make the U-50s with three-axle trucks was because the span-bolster wheel arrangement of the U-50 was apparently not well-suited for high speed, and better suited for slower speeds. Six axles would also be apparently sufficient for high-speed operation. The U-50 did have a few small reliability issues, most notably being very heavy at 279 tons. So the weight-saving measures and modifications were supposed to make the U-50C an improved version of the U-50, but ironically, they backfired and made it very unsuccessful. Turns out that another weight-saving measure used in the U-50Cs was that instead of using copper wiring like the U-50, DD-35s, and other diesels, General Electric used aluminum wiring in the U-50C. Aluminum is lighter than copper, but at the same time, copper is a better conductor than aluminum, meaning that it can withstand higher voltages and is thus more thermally conductive. 
This also means that copper is more stable, durable, and performs better than aluminum wires in anything, including locomotives. Using aluminum wires in the U-50Cs made them prone to overheating and suffering electrical fires, along with other mechanical problems like engine fires, the engines frequently developing low oil pressure, cooling water leaking, and the dynamic brake grids being prone to melting. Plus, even with all these weight-reducing measures, the three-axle trucks still suffered badly from stress cracks forming in them from fatigue from the locomotive's cast frames, as they just couldn't handle the excessive weight pressing down on them. Which explains why General Electric, Alco, and EMD made their other models eight-axle locomotives. Union Pacific rewired one unit with copper experimentally, and considered having an outside contract to replace the wiring on all the other units, but decided that the U-50Cs were just too problematic to be worth fixing. Not to mention, copper wiring only made the issue with stress cracks in the trucks worse. Plus, the EMD DD35 models had won out by that time, and the even better DDA40Xs were now roaming the Union Pacific system. Following a downturn in business from the energy crisis in 1976, coupled with Union Pacific acquiring new six-axle units that were more reliable than even the U-50, both they and the U-50s were finally withdrawn from active service, the latter of which only lasting at most seven years. It's definitely disappointing that all the Union Pacific and Southern Pacific U-50s were scrapped by 1977, but it was no surprise nor disappointing that all the U-50Cs had been scrapped by 1978. They did not deserve to be preserved like the U-50s, DD-35 models, and DDA-40Xs. They were evidently a stupider design as a result of using that aluminum wiring and not having enough axles to hold them up. Definitely General Electric should have made 4 axle trucks for them to ride on and used recycled 3 axle turbine trucks for smaller locomotives and used copper wiring instead of making what in my opinion was a rather lazy decision they did. It's also a mixture of my fact and opinion. Oh, and the U-50Cs were also weaker than the U-50s as a result of using smaller engines and less axles. Only 88,000 pounds continuously on the U-50C, versus 139,000 pounds continuously on the U-50, even though they both had 5,000 horsepower. Overall, the moral of this story is, which I'll say in my best Electro Boom impersonation, <coughs> Don't use aluminum wires in locomotives. Use copper wiring, and never overload your trucks with too much weight. Add more axles instead. You will get less stress on the axles and more attractive effort. Unless you want to repeat the disaster that was the U-50C. And thank gosh General Electric recovered easily. Not to mention that it's now currently the top locomotive builder in the U.S. at this point. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something helpful. If so, press the like button and subscribe to my channel to see more railroad related content like this. Also check out my newest poll in the description or in the cards to vote which diesel locomotive you want me to discuss next on the show. I'm Andrew Rayla Bammers, and I'll be back in the next episode of Dead on Arrival. I mean, yes, they move. They move. Yeah, yeah. See that that other rack that's up there on the west side. Huh?